Listen, my hair is a mess. My room's a mess, relatively to what I'm used to. We just got a stasis nerf, like a huge one. I'm not even finished reading it, but I know that this is going to be substantial. I know that there's a lot of you that want to know my thoughts on it. So I'm going to do it quick and dirty, unscripted, live, reaction everything. Okay, so here we go. Now, there's a bit of preamble. We'll come back to this, okay? I think this preamble is important to read through. We'll read this preamble a little bit later, but let's just get straight into it, okay? General Stasis. This is a patch that is going to be going live at next reset, June 3rd. Not joking. General st Stasis. Stasis freeze. Reduced duration of all non-super freezes versus players to 1.35 seconds. Note this freeze is too short to break out of, so breaking out is now only possible when frozen by a super. Reduce special weapon, heavy weapon, and light ability bonus damage versus frozen players from plus 50% to 5%. Okay, so basically, if you're frozen from a non- if you're frozen just by an ability like a grenade, cold snap, glacier, whatever, you're only frozen- you're frozen for less time now. I think it was 2 seconds before, now it's- or 1.5 seconds or something like that. Now it's 1.35 seconds. You can't break out of it, but- you're also going to take less damage from everything. Because previously, to kill someone frozen, you were better off using a special weapon or a heavy weapon or a light ability or something like that. If you, if you ever wanted to run double primary, it was just a, genuinely a bad choice because, well, stasis was a thing. But now, all weapons seem to do less damage against frozen opponents. So if you get frozen, it's not a death sentence because you will thaw... I guess that's the yeah, you will thaw quicker and you'll have damage resistance while you're frozen. Amazing. Stasis slow. No longer reduces weapon accuracy. Now increases weapon flinch when under fire. I will take that. I will take that. As long as I can fight back. As long as I can fight back. That is the number one thing that everyone and their bloody dog has been complaining about is no, the weapon accuracy. Why can I not fight back while I'm slowed? I, I can do it when I'm smoked with a this, with this hunter thing, the hunter smoke with the night stalker, but I can't do it when I'm slowed with stasis. Now I can. Thank you, Bungie. Holy shit. No longer suppresses class ability and air moves like Icarus Dash. Very good. Do not suppress anybody in Destiny with respect to movement. Freezing, still not, you know, Admittedly, still not super thrilled about it, but really glad they're moving back into movement. Uh, known issue, Storm Stormcrawler's Ionic Blink is still suppressed when slowed. We plan to address this in a future release. Alright, fair enough. Reduce movement speed penalty when slowed by 20%. That's good, we can move a little bit faster. Whisper of Hedron's Fragment. No longer increases weapon damage after freezing. Now increases more weapon mobility, weapon aim assist, mobility, resilience, recovery after freezing. So, like celerity, but also for your stats, which is kind of nice. Um, like, celerity type effect is in that it, it boosts weapon stats passively, which is good. I was never a fan of the pocket kill clip, to be honest, I think it lasted a bit too, too long and it was too easy to proc. So, rip uh, Ace of Spades two tap builds for any of you still rocking those. <laughs> This is a good change. I like it a lot. Whisper of Rhyme Fragment no longer provides overshield while in super. So funny story about that. I found out the other day that Whisper of Rhyme chains with Whisper of, or stacks with Whisper of Chains. And if you were a Behemoth Titan and you had a full Rhyme Overshield, you were virtually unkillable, even to rockets. The only thing that we found could kill you was a Tractor Cannon or Ward Cliff Coil. So I'm really glad to see that this is gone as well. Cold Snap Grenade. Seeker no longer tracks targets after initial target acquisition. Increased arming duration before Seeker spawns from 0.3 to 0.8 seconds. Reduced detonation radius versus players from 3 meters to 1.5 meters. Now bounces off walls and detonates on the ground. Thank god for that. I hated this. I hated that it was on the walls. Reduced detonation radius versus players from 3.5 to 1.5. So it basically needs to be really like on top of you for it to freeze you. Uh, increased aiming duration before seeker spawns from 0.3 to 0.8 seconds or arming duration. Right, so basically you'll be able to you'll be able to move out the way a little bit faster from the cold snap. Got it. Seeker no longer tracks targets after initial target acquisition. So it will track in one direction and if you move direction it will not track you, it will not home in on you. That's great. So it's basically not a, a, a colony but frozen colony. It's not a colony, it's just 
it'll track to the position that you're in. So, for those of you who like to hold lanes and stay in one place, this doesn't affect you, but for everybody else who does know how to move and not stay in one place for too long, for those of you who have internalized the two second rule, congratulations, that's now relevant again. Titan Behemoth. Looking at recent gameplay data, the Behemoth generally has the highest win rate of any subclass in most 6v6 game modes, and is also amongst the strongest in 3v3 game modes. In Trials of Osiris matches, for example, only Top Tree Dawnblade has a higher win rate. We've taken these strengths into account when balancing the Behemoth's abilities. Between Shiver Strike and Cry Cryoclasm, the Behemoth has incredibly high mobility, making making targeting the behemoth frustrating for controller players in particular. We've taken steps to make the behemoth more targetable while moving, which should hopefully alleviate some of this frustration. Shiver Strike, reduced flight speed and distance. Reduced knockback versus players. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna miss that. That was really fun to do. Remove slow detonation on player impact. That's good. The yeet is enough. <laughs> Yeeting and then being slowed was just like, okay, here's your cake, now you can eat it too. Cryoclasm now requires the time to sprint for 1.25 seconds for activation when non-super. Lines up with shoulder charge. Remove the cooldown. That's interesting. Very interesting. I suppose now with this um, with this timer added, that makes more sense. Apologies for any sirens you hear in the background. Howl of the Storm. Reduce angle of initial freezing slash damage cone. Reduce crystal creation and freezing radius. Slow down sequence of crystal formation to allow victims more opportunity to escape. Now spawns a small crystal on walls if performed into walls. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm not the most well-versed with Titan Behemoth, but all of this sounds very, very good. Glacial Quick. Reduce heavy slam vertical freeze range versus players. Okay, interesting. Reduce damage resistance from 50% to 47%. Not that Behemoth was particularly hard to kill, at least on PC, but this small kind of incremental change may go a very long way. That's that's my thinking. That's a very specific change to do. And you have to you have to trust the testing that's gone into behind that. Only time will tell if to see if that is enough. Hunter Revenant. This is the one I'm the most well versed in. The Revenant's crucible win rate kills per minute and average efficiency is generally within the top six of all subclass trees, but its usage rate is incredibly high. In Trials of Osiris matches, it has the fifth highest win rate of any subclass tree, but is used by a whopping 36% of Trials players, meaning all of you need to get good. This high usage means players fall victim to its abilities more often, multiplying the frustration of being slowed by Withering Blade and Winter Shroud. We hope that the changes we've made to being slowed paired with the adjustments to Revenant's abilities make this experience better. Withering Blade. Reduce slow duration versus players from 2.5 seconds to 1.5 seconds. Good. Reduce Whisper of Durance, slow duration extension versus players from 2 seconds to 0.5 seconds. So it's not going to have much effect. Whisper of Durance might not be the play anymore. Basically, with Whisper of Durance, it goes from 1.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds. Previously, it was going from 2.5 seconds to 4.5 seconds. That's a big nerf. Reduce damage versus players from 65 to 45 after one bounce reduced further to 30. So this is going to be a direct hit kind of ability and it's going to do less damage. That is amazing. Reduce projectile speed by 10%. Wow, okay, getting even better. Reduce tracking after bouncing off a wall, even better. This is going to be what I always hoped this would be. It's basically a slow designed for shotgun apes and nothing else. This is amazing. This might kill Hunter Revenant, but it is amazing. This is exactly what we needed. Winter Shroud. Reduce slow duration versus players from 2.5 seconds to 1.5 seconds. Fair enough. Reduce Whisper of Durance slow duration. Yep, the same as the other one. Touch of Winter. Cold Snap Sneaker. It's cold Snap Sneaker. Cold Snap Seeker no longer has increased movement or travel distance. Oh my god, yes, thank god. Cold Snap Seeker now spawns a small crystal, stasis crystal on detonation. Good. Um, just for the added, well, skill, I guess, or the, the added cost. It's a small little price to pay. It's nice that you get a little crystal on, on, on detonation, which only makes getting Whisper of Rhyme over shield easier. Okay, we'll talk about that later. 
<laughs> Warlock Shadebinder. The Shadebinder's crystal performance generally within the top 10 of all subclass trees. In Trials of Osiris matches, it had the 9th highest win rate of all subclass trees. By the way, I'm pulling all of this data from the weekend of the May the 14th, but in general, in generally doesn't deviate much between weekends. Vog launch weekend shook things up a bit though. While the Shadebinder may not be the most powerful in competitive play, being frozen by its abilities takes a large emotional toll on the victim. <laughs> We've adjusted Penumbral Blast to require more accuracy versus players in order to turn this ability into more of a skill shot given its powerful effects. So, Penumbral Blast. Reduce tracking and proximity detonation size and tracking versus players. Good. Reduce freeze radius versus players when impacting the environment from 2.7 to 1.5 meters. So, you can still aim at the grounded players, but you better be aiming near their feet, basically, not like near them in their general vicinity. Ice Flare Bolts. Seeker now only chains once when spawned from a player shatter. Good, so it doesn't like continuously chain. Not that I think that was a particularly bad or a huge issue that we were noticing in PvP, but it was possible to get silly, silly situations in Iron Banner where everybody was stood on his own. Winter's Wrath. Freezing projectile tracking strength now ramps down to zero after two seconds of flight. Good, very good. We hope these changes have a positive impact on your Crucible experience. While the gameplay team is very busy working on future releases, Crucible and the PvP community are incredibly important to us and will continue to monitor gameplay and community feedback regarding stasis and subclass abilities in general. We'll continue to update stasis until its win rates and usage rates are in line with the light subclasses. Expect more updates in the future. I never want to hear, I never want to f***ing hear anymore that they're not listening and that they don't care. Because all of this, on the surface, so far, testing required, absolutely, discretion required, you know, field testing required, for sure. But all of this, the way it's worded, the things they've targeted, the, the, the little line here at the end, I don't want to hear ever again that they're not listening. Now listen, action expresses priorities, absolutely. 600 days without a Crucible map, unforgivable, in my opinion. But there is someone listening. There is someone testing. There are developers on Bungie who care about PvP. This is the proof. Yes, Crucible feels like the forgotten child. And Stasis for the last six months has been horrible. But they're doing something about it. Yes, six months too late. That might not be enough to bring some of the people back. It's being tackled in a big way, and they said something in B before this to, to, that really, really said a lot. To it's it's what they said in this preamble really means a lot for me as a very aggrieved PvP player, like someone who had a video ready to go to talk about stasis, and now that's just been nixed. But basically. I don't like Stasis, I've never liked it since it began, came out. I've always said, even though with the Scrub Mentality video, I've always said, listen, don't make excuses for why you're dying. But when you're talking about the state of the game, you're talking about the state of the sandbox and all of that, it is important. It is important to look at it from a macro perspective. And when you look at it from a macro perspective, Stasis was not good for PvP. It was not good for the Crucible at all. It was driving people away. It was making people angry, frustrated. It was, it was just bad. And it was making players like me feel very, very aggrieved. Like, why would I even continue to make improvement content when years of advanced positioning uh, work, uh, years of good gunplay, years of tactical gameplay management could all be undone by a shuriken throw, just an errant shuriken throw. I could not sit here and make improvement content with a straight face while stasis was in the state that it was. I was not for stasis. But I also know what I was signing up for. If I played Crucible, this is what to expect. And therefore, I, don't, I didn't blame it, because I accepted it. I'm glad to see the preamble. Where was it, exactly? Next, we have some details for next week's hotfix below. As you'll see, there are a lot of changes to go over here, and they're all focused on stasis. This patch is something we've moved up from Season 15 to help smooth over some of the pain points players have been feeling. It's important to note here that shifting our focus like this comes at a considerable cost to the team, so it's unlikely that mid-season patches of this scope will become a regular occurrence. They prioritized a stasis nerf over whatever else they had going. And we're not privy to the, to the development cycle, we're only consumers. 
But like I said before, action expresses priorities, and they brought this up. So they are listening. Do we need more action on top of this? Yeah, absolutely. But don't take this away from Bungie. And don't take this away from us. Don't use this as an excuse to go out and write something salty in the comments. Take the win, because this is a huge one. And let's just move forward from there. All right. Full twab in the description below. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I'm Ascend Nomad, and I will see you this weekend with the Fatebringer review. Cheers.